Let's talk about front and back facing, armhole facing, and back ties to alleviate buttons in the back of your top or dress, or you don't wanna put lining in your dress, so you rather do facing. So let's go ahead and talk about it, shall we? So if that's some content you would like to see, please continue to watch. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video I am going to be showing you guys how to draft front facing, back facing, how to create a tie in the back of your top. Now I'm not going to be cutting out fabric but I'm going to show you how to draft it and then in another video I will show you how to add it to the back of your top when I'm creating a top or a dress that requires a button in the back, then I'm able to show you how to put those ties on. But I'm just gonna be drafting in this video, all right, to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Also, I'm gonna show you how, if you do not want to do lining, and you wanna alleviate the lining, I have a video, but I'm gonna put it in here, how you could just draft front and back facing to alleviate the lining, all right? And then another thing I'm gonna do now, the pattern that I'm gonna use, it actually has sleeves, but I'm gonna show you how you could draft armhole facing to alleviate using bias tape. Now, if you guys have heard me say it before, that I'm not a big fan of using bias tape along the neckline or the armhole, all right? So I always opt to create facing pieces in order to do that. And I'm gonna show you how you could create armhole facing two different ways, all right? So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. But before we do so, and if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hello, ciao, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, waguan, sambanani, salon, bonjour. If you are returning, you guys know what to do by now. Go get you a quick snack, something to drink. Come on back so we can go ahead and get into this video. So without further ado, I'm gonna say this real quick. I am dealing with a headache. However, I wanted to get this video to you because you guys asked last week about if I could create a video for, the, for you. And I did some drafting that day, but I had to put it down. So I'm just gonna do it all today, all in the video, and then I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> lay down, all right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this drafting front, back, armhole and creating some neckties. Now, listen to this is I have showed you guys how to create front and back facing for any pattern, but I'm going to do it in this video simply because this is one thing that you guys always ask um, for as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and use one of my TNT patterns only because it's out. I'm not working on this pattern, but because I keep it close just in case, but the pattern that I am using is McCall's 7542, which is also McCall's 8161. So I'm going to show you what the pattern looks like right here, right? And like I said, this is an old pattern. I have used this pattern several times. I have made a lightweight jacket. I just opened up the top, made a lightweight jacket. I have also done like... Um, Peplum, I've created peplum. So this is one of the patterns that I use all the time. And I feel like this will be an easier way of me showing you with a top and you could do the same thing for a dress or whatever else you want to do, all right? All right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. So the first thing you wanna do is grab your front pattern piece. We're gonna create the front and back facing first before creating the armhole, all right? So I'm gonna put chapters in so you could go to um, different parts of this video, all right? So let me grab some pattern weights. And what you want to do, now these are just basically coins, coins from my husband um, fraternity, but I mean, it is what it is, right? So I'm just going to move this up so you are able to see this. And I'm going to make sure that my pattern is in the monitor so you can see, all right? And when, now, this portion says, says center front, all right? So basically what that means is you're going to cut this front on the fold of fabric. So what you wanna do is trace around the neck 
area. So I'm just gonna make dashes around the neckline. Now you can transfer this notch that you see right here. Next thing I'm gonna do is right at the center front, I'm gonna take my ruler. Now I have a see-through ruler, a hip curve ruler, and then I have my SA curve ruler, okay? Now you can no longer find the SA curve ruler, which is why I grab my hip curve ruler as well. And then I have my uh, see-through ruler. Now what you wanna do is from the top, you wanna go down three inches and make a dot and bring it, make dashes all the way back up to the neckline, all right? You wanna do the exact same thing at your armhole area, or your shoulder seam, I should say, right? So basically, you're gonna do the same thing, make sure you go out three inches and bring it all the way back to your neck area, just like so, all right? Now, all you're gonna do is move this front pattern piece. Now, this says AB, but you could do it for any size before you ask me, can I do it for any size? Yes, you can. I'm just gonna put that back in there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a pen only because you guys probably can't see this in a pencil. So I'm gonna switch this over to a pen, trace the marks that I have already made. All right, so that's the front pattern piece. Now I'm gonna take my see-through ruler, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go from this corner, and I'm gonna mark three inches out. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. So I'm just gonna make a dot right there. From this line, make a dot out. And do it all the way around that curve of your neck area. So go ahead and do that now. Now, all you wanna do is make sure you grab like the curved part of your hip curve ruler. You probably don't have an SA curve ruler, so I'm just gonna grab my hip curve ruler and I'm just basically making sure that the lines meet up, the dot that I made. Just make sure that you are able to definitely meet those lines and just make a curve all the way back. Make sure you do not have a straight curve though. So I'm just gonna use this portion and connect the dots basically is what you're doing. All right, now I have a curve, uh, like a sharp point right here and right there. So all I'm gonna do is take the tip of my hip curve ruler. I like doing this with my SA curve, but I'm gonna show you with the hip curve what to do when you have that, you just take it and you just basically make a curve. Then that way you don't have that sharp edge and I'm gonna get rid of that, this sharp edge just like this. So basically this line right here, I will not cut out, all right? And then because this is cut on the fold right here, cause that's your front, you're just gonna put front facing you could, and then put the pattern that you're using, cut one on fold of fabric and cut one on fold of interfacing. And then you're gonna cut it out. Now, one thing I will mention is I like to put a notch right here halfway through. So a half of three is one and a half. So I'm gonna put a notch right here, just a marking for a notch, all right? And this is your center front. All right, now that's your front facing. So we already did our front. And really what, what it's gonna look like is if you put this, you'll notice that your facing, you could probably see this just a little bit, is right underneath. That's what your facing look like, all right? Now go ahead and grab your back pattern piece. Now, I wanna say this. This pattern that I am showing you already have uh, facing pieces, and I'm gonna show you this. It has your front and your back facing. So. When you look at the facing piece, this one is the front. You see how it says fold? Well, that's because the front of the pattern says fold, all right? So if I do it like this, yes, it is a little bit bigger. I did mine at three. This one looks like it's about one and a half. 
it's up to you how wide you want yours to be. Um, but I just like to go with three inches because it covers a lot. All right. But if you want to do one and a half, just make sure you go all the way around doing one and a half. All right. Now let's go ahead and do our back pattern piece. It's the same thing. So go ahead and place your pattern piece down. All right. And then what you're going to do, let me move this to where you could definitely see it. And then what you want to do is grab some pattern weights. And you're going to do the exact same thing that you did for the front. So let me grab a couple of more pattern weights. And you're going to do the same thing. Trace your neck edge. And because I did three inches on the front facing, you're going to do the same thing for the back. Come over three inches, make a dot and make the line all the way back to the neck edge. Then you're going to do the center back seam the same way. You're just going to go from the top to the bottom, mark out three inches down from the top, make a dot. All right, move your pattern pieces. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing that you did for the front. Three inches down from the top, all the way around. All right, now that I have my dots, I'm gonna take you could take your hip curve ruler. If you have an SA curve ruler, take that and just basically connect the dots. All right, so that's what my facing look like. And this is the back. So you want to put a double notch there for the back. So I'm just going to make a notch, two notches at the center back. And then I'm just gonna make one notch right here at the shoulders. All right, so the one notch right here is the shoulders and this is the center back. So I'm gonna write center back right here. Now you want to label your pattern piece and I'm gonna write back facing Let me get another pencil or pen, something to write with. And because the back, like you've seen on the back pattern piece, it's cut two for the back because there's a, uh, this is gonna be folded five eighths of an inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna show you how you put ties at the top, all right? So you're gonna cut two. So what you're going to do is back facing, cut two a fabric, and cut two of interfacing. And then you're going to cut this pattern piece out. All right. All right, so we have done the front and the back facing. Now go ahead and grab your front and your back pattern pieces. Now I'm going to move this paper off to the side for just one second. And I'm gonna show you two ways of doing your armhole, how you can draft some armholes. All right, now I have my front and my back pattern piece. All right, so the first way that you can do this is simple. What you can do, I'm gonna show you the first way on paper. All right, so all you would have to do, grab your pattern weight and you would trace like you have done for your front and your back pattern piece. You would definitely trace your armhole area. All right, so trace around here and then you would go over an inch and a half at the shoulder seam and an inch and a half at the side seam. So basically what you would do, I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Trace the armhole off. Now I'm not being precise, but please be precise with yours if you want it to come out right. Make sure you mark your notch there, all right? Take your ruler at the shoulder seam, which is here at the top, you wanna to go out an inch and a half, make a dot, 
trace that shoulder seam and then move your pattern piece, all right? Now, before you move your pattern piece, make sure you go down one and a half inch on this side seam right here, all right? So let me scoot it over so you can see. Make sure you go down an inch and a half here as well. Make you a dot. All right, so now I'm gonna pull it up. Now I'm gonna grab a different color pen. I'm gonna move my front pattern piece. Now this is the front pattern piece. I'm just filling in the colors that I already marked. All right, and then you're gonna do the exact same thing that you have done for the other pattern pieces. You're just gonna mark an inch and a quarter. And then you will connect the lines. Once again, connect the lines like you have done for the front pattern piece as well. All right, and then you would just label this once again. So this is the front, right? And this is the back. So you definitely wanna put front, arm facing, cut, two now because even though this front is cut on a fold you have two armholes so you need to cut two of fabric for this one all right now you would do the same thing for your back pattern piece grab your back you would do the same thing trace off your armhole go down an inch and a half at the side seam and at the shoulder seam connect like we have done for the armhole facing for the front and then you would cut two of the back as well. All right, so that's how you draft the facing for if you wanna do it that way. Now, the other way that you could do facing, I'm gonna go ahead and move this paper out of the way real quick. Now, the other way that you can draft facing, if you wanna do it this way and make your life easy, you can. And there's many of ways that you could do these things, but I like to try to show you as easy as possible. Go ahead and grab your tape measure, and this will require a little bit of math. So be prepared to do some adding, which I'm gonna take out my, cal my handy dandy calculator. And what you want to do is this. So you want to figure out how long the front is. So basically you want to take your ta tape measure and walk it all the way around your front and back armhole piece, all right? Mine is about 10 on the front, so I'm gonna write that number down. Now I'm gonna write that number down about right here. So 10 inches for the front, all right? Whatever you get for yours, you need to write that number down for you. Now this is just my number, all right? Now. You want to do the same thing for the back. So I'm gonna grab my back pattern piece and I'm going to make sure I walk it around the arm, arm curve as well. All right, so I got 10 for the back as well, all right? So the front is 10 and the back is 10, all right? Now, one thing about it is you have a armhole, you have a uh, shoulder seam and you have a side seam. Now, the front is going to attach to the back at the shoulder seam and then you're going to have to attach at the side seam. So there's five eighths of an inch here, five eighths of an inch here, which five eighths plus five eighths is 1.25 or one and a quarter. So you need to add that to both your front and your back pattern piece. So 1.25 or one and a quarter plus one and a quarter is two and a half. So you wanna take this 20 and you wanna add two and a half inches, which is 22. Now, the thing about it is because you have two pattern pieces, you just wanna add 1.25 to the front and then 1.25 for the back. So what you wanna do is essentially create a line that's uh, 
you want to create this 11.25 inches long is what I mean, meant to say, all right? So how you do that, now on this one, you definitely want to cut on the bias. <laughs> I would definitely tell you to cut on the bias so it's not, well, you don't have to cut on the bias. I'll just show you how to do it, all right? So what you want to do is create a line. Now, it depends on how far out you want to go. So what I'm going to do is take my tape measure and I'm going to see how two inches look it comes all the way out here. So I'm gonna do this at about one and a half all the way around, all right? So what I want to do is basically, because there's going to be a facing, I'm gonna do one and a half. So what I'm gonna do is create a line that measures 11 and a quarter, right? All right, so this 11 and a quarter is what goes all the way around. Now I'm gonna make it come out one and a half. Now, remind you that when you do this, it's 11 and a half by one and a half. Now, because when you take it out, it's gonna have seam allowance that's gonna be uh, taken out of 1.25, so it's gonna be 10 inches to where it's gonna fit nicely, right? But I'm going to make this come out about one and a half, all right? All right, now, this is your armhole facing. I know it looks crazy, but you're going to put front and and back armhole or just armhole facing whatever you want to put and you're just going to cut to a fabric and then cut to of interfacing. All right? So that's how you draft your front and back armhole facing because essentially what happens is this is going to be your front and your back. But you want to cut two for one sleeve. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to actually cut four. Um, and the reason why is because you have a front and a back for both. So what you should have cut, I should have done this 22, but I'm just going to cut it on the fold. So basically I'm just going to say cut on fold because then that way you have the same, I'm sorry, you have the same and it goes all the way around. So I'm going to put fold and you're going to uh, cut two, I'm sorry, cut two of on fold. All right, so let me rephrase that. I put the fold line right here because you want it to go all the way around and it's going to be 22 inches. So it's going to be 20 inches once you uh, take out the seam allowance, right? So what's going to happen essentially is you're going to cut on the fold and it's going to be cut two on fold of fabric and cut two of on fold of interfacing. All right. So I do apologize about that, but it's going to turn out perfectly fine. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So that is how you do your front and your back armhole facing. Now we're gonna go ahead and draft the ties. So the ties is easy. I make my ties 24 inches by two and a half inches. Now, because I am gonna save some paper, I'm just gonna make a line that's 12 inches. So get your ruler and what you wanna do is create a line that's 12 inches long and two and a half inches high. So I'm just gonna put my ruler here, go up two and a half inches. All right, and the same thing on the other side, two and a half inches. All right, and then I'm gonna close it out, so. Now, on one end, it doesn't matter which end you put it on, but you go cut on the fold, all right? So whatever end you wanna put it on, you wanna put fold. And then you wanna just label this back ties, cut two on fold of fabric, all right? Now, the reason why I'm telling you that I do two and a half inches uh, for the height is because your seam allowance, uh, SA stands for seam allowance, is a half of an inch. 
all right? So when you fold it in half, it's gonna remove one inch. So your ties is gonna measure 24 inches by 1.5 inches when you take out the seam allowance at the top and at the bottom, all right? Because you're gonna fold it right sides together, stitch, turn it right side out, and put it on the back of your top, all right? So I'm gonna show you how you place the ties in the back in another video. I'm also gonna show you how you do your armhole in another video as well, which I will be using this armhole versus the drafting of the front and the back, all right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time. All right, so there you have it. That's entirely how I draft the front, the back facing, um, the ties, as well as how you do the armhole facing. So I hope this video really motivated you to just draft some facing so you can not only use up some of that scrap fabric, but you can also save some coins and some dollars, not buying bias tapes or buttons to go in the back of your top or your dress. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And since you made it this far, do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and also smash that notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep sewing. Vinci. They're picking sides, they're crossing the line.